Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I've got an exciting video today on two different sheath systems that I've built for the TOPS Operator 7. These are two custom orders, um, similar in some ways, very different in others, and both of them are premium options, and uh, they just happen to kind of be around the same time frame. So I thought it would be a good economic decision as far as my time goes to record a video for both of them. So here we go. First off, we have four gentlemen named Malcolm. Malcolm has ordered previously, and uh, this just kind of got heaped into the, the tail end of his order. So I'll be shipping out his other sheets at the same time. Um, but before I recorded a video on those, he had a uh, Tops to Home, a field knife, a tier one C from Phobos, and also from Phobos, a tier one mini. I did three sheaths with seamless liners, TMMS systems, etc. If you guys look in my most recent videos, you'll see that in uh, some of the more recent stuff. Um, so here we go. He asked for a sheath with distressed leather bonded to the Kydex, a baldric system for the carry setup here, and then also an alternative carry setup. We have a tech lock with a pivot plate, as well as my invention, the clasp dangler, which allows you to quickly convert between tech lock and dangler. All you have to do for that is open your tech lock up throw this piece into the tech lock, close it up and lock it. And boom, you are officially carrying as a dangler. So this is obviously a very quick and versatile option. And uh, I'm really proud of this, uh, this concept, this idea I came up with. And uh, a lot of people have been ordering it recently. So I thought I would uh, also throw it out there that there is at least one gentleman copying it and renaming it something else which I just kind of find to be a, a little bit of a scumbag move. Um, there are other guys that do some of the things that I do, and uh, almost all of them at least have the uh, the moral compass to ask if I'm okay with that. And I've never turned anybody down who has uh, who's reached out about that. So I, I have no issues. I don't need to make money off other people using ideas that I came up with or anything. That's not the goal. It's simply uh, I just view it as a little bit shady to rename it to obscure the fact that you're not the inventor of it and make it look like you are. But that said, um, it's obviously a very popular option if somebody else is trying to copy it. So I'm proud of that fact. Now this sheath is really nice. It's got a great click, no rattle, no play. The rattle you're hearing is the, uh, the D rings there. Um, the draw ballistic, just super, super nice. I'm very pleased with how this came out and, uh, Malcolm, I hope you enjoy this too. Now what you're looking at as far as the leather goes, this is called a fade dye. Some people would call it a starburst. Um, there is actually a specific kind of look to a starburst dye, uh, which usually involves a little more visible streaking. So I'm just kind of calling this a center fade or something along those lines, but you can see it's burgundy kydex and it's got a fade to black around the edges. I've also to kind of make it look more like a true leather sheath. I've put black edge coat all the way around, which kind of just gives it a similar texture and feel to the edges of a factory leather sheath that you'd find with that black glossy shell around the edge. Um, so there we have it. Now the distressed leather look, obviously you can see some of the, the wear and crinkles and stuff. I've had some other projects that I've done with distressed leather and gotten some comments on it below where you know, some people are saying basically that it's it's kind of cheating the system that you should really earn the wear on your sheets by using them, getting outside. And while I do agree with that to some degree, I also see the, uh, the reality of the situation, which is that when you bond leather over Kydex, the leather can't wear the same way it normally would. It would take, you know, some serious abuse to get it to start wearing. And at that point, you're probably actually just ruining the leather. Um, so getting out and using it for years and years, if, if you're not really abusing it, you're probably never actually going to see the look of this change hardly at all. Um, whereas with a real leather sheath, uh, or full, full leather, no kydex, I should say, you'll find that your leather has the ability to move more freely. It can be bent, it can be creased, it can be worn and all that to the same degree that a normal leather thing would. So with this, it's just a different story. Um, so I like the aesthetic effect of the worn leather look, the distressed leather. Um, but mostly for me, it's just about the fact that it adds texture, which kind of just brings out all the shapes in the leather, the contour 
um, of the Kydex beneath it, the coloring, all that stuff. So I see both sides of the coin and um, I don't really hold too much of an opinion there, but that is definitely a hot button issue. So if you guys want to comment down below, weigh in and give me your thoughts on that. I think we'd all like to uh, see what everybody thinks. All right, so there we have it. That's pretty much the uh, the gist of this. This is a very simple setup, but I really like the carry options. If you guys aren't already familiar with my go-to for Baldrick carry, this is from Beach and Tactical. This is, in my opinion, the best Baldrick sling in the entire world. Uh, Beach and Tactical also offers uh, great rifle slings. So go check them out. Uh, you can also find them at the Preppers Bunker Outdoors, Jacob Peterson. Um, just some really fantastic work. And he's got some new stuff going on on his channel, like Knife News, as well as, uh, as well as uh, I want to say he's calling it the Moonshine Sling. Uh, something, something along those lines, but really nice looking new products. So go check that out. All right, the next project we have is going to, uh, geez, let me think. Robert is his name. Now, Robert asked me originally to build him a alligator wrapped sheath for the Tops Operator 7. And at the last minute, he asked if he could add a piggyback, a breakaway piggyback for the Tops MSK 2.5. So that's what we're looking at here. Now, this sheath has, uh, if I can situate it properly here, this sheath also has a couple of carry setups on it to include a tech lock with a pivot plate. As you can see here and the pivot plate guys, I didn't explain it on the other one, but basically it allows you to go from a vertical position to a horizontal position without having to, uh, that was my uh, breaker switching off real quick. Hold on. There we go. Uh, so you can go from vertical to horizontal without the use of any tools, anything in between. And you can also remove it, remount it 90 degrees off and get another 90 degree pivot range. So, by remounting it in the four different 90s, you have access to 360 degrees of rotation. You obviously just can't achieve them all at once. So there is something there. Uh, it's a really nice option. It's very rugged and versatile, and in particular, stable when it comes to a pancake style sheath like this. Pancake sheaths are when you have two layers of Kydex and you sandwich the knife between those two pieces versus taco style, which is where you actually bend the piece over the knife and um, you would only have eyelets along one edge. So with pancake style, like you're looking at here, we have mounting points above and below the blade, which just gives you a little bit more of a stable uh, platform when you have something like the pivot plate. Um, now this one also comes with a clasp dangler, which I have made out of alligator. So you see that here. This is actually a layer of cowhide bonded to a layer of alligator. Um, and the reason I do that is because the gator is really rugged material, so it's perfectly strong enough to hold up and uh, function as a dangler. However, it's really thin, so it tends to move a little bit too freely in that D-ring, and I'm not really a fan of that. I like it to feel nice and tight. I like it to feel um, like, it's, uh, like it's new, uh, especially when it is new. So uh, I just do the, the bonding of the two surfaces together to thicken it up. Uh, it also provides you with a uh, really consistent surface on the inside of this. If I were just to use Gator, the actual backside of Alligator, let me show it to you real quick, is very rough like this. Um, it's kind of soft suede type material, but the texturing of it is just no good for uh, looping onto your belt. So I like having that consistent normal surface that cowhide provides, but on the outside you've got the Gator. So just thicker, uh, very rugged, and uh, very functional there. All right, so obviously you can just throw this into your tech lock, close it up, boom. You have converted to a dangler carry, it's just like that. Now the other carry option on here, this is my three-point chest harness. This is done in collaboration with Beach and Tactical as well. I buy the uh, harness arms off of him. He produces these and sends them to me. And then I produce a D-ring adapter out of Kydex. So I put the D-ring through the Kydex and then attach it to a welded metal O-ring. And that's what kind of holds the whole system together behind your back. Um, this is a great option because it can be worn virtually in any angle, any height, any location on your chest or your back. You just obviously have to reconfigure it however you want. Um, it is a little bit of a pain in the butt, 
but it's well worth taking the time to figure out the length of the, the webbing that you need. There's plenty of excess on here for any body type. And uh, I generally just kind of try to put it on in three roughly evenly um, configured lengths and let the end user figure out what they need from that. So when you do this, you're going to want to uh, pay attention to the way that I've locked the straps. Uh, well, actually, no, sorry, I have not locked the straps. I've, I've locked them. Uh, all right, how do I explain? Okay, in short, you have these tri-glide buckles, these metal tri-glides is what they're called. And what you wanna do is have your strap go through twice for anywhere that you, uh, once you've got your length configured and to lock it, you're gonna want to pass it back through a third time, like so. And that's gonna make it absolutely impossible for the webbing to come undone on you. There's no amount of pressure that's gonna accomplish that before breaking the webbing. So you actually have to manually unweb that. So I'm, I'm gonna leave this one as is. And uh, Robert, you just have to adjust this and figure out what's best for your body type. But the idea generally is that this will ride on your chest and the handle of the Operator 7 will be canted downward slightly. So it'd be kind of facing out to the right hip and uh, just puts it in a really comfortable position. I don't have the camera facing me, so it's a little bit different, but um, you can use your imagination. Your head is up here, belly button down here, and uh, this is your right arm, this is your left arm. So yeah, it just kind of angles down like this. So for a right hand draw, it's really comfortable. You just reach up and draw it down out this way. Obviously I'm uh, talking about how it's facing out. So you have to imagine that you're looking at a person wearing it on their chest, but that's pretty much that. Now, obviously alligator skin on this one, instead of cowhide, this stuff is really, really hard to work with. And it's also really rugged. So it makes it um, just very a rewarding, I think, feeling um, sheath. It looks really nice. You catch some of these natural browns that are in that alligator skin. And um, I just absolutely love that. Now, he also asked me to set this up with some accessories on it. So accessory holders, I should say. All the accessories and the knives are actually mine, uh, but we own the same stuff. So he asked me to put on, uh, and no, I'm looking at it. I'm, I think it might actually be just a tad loose. Let me tighten one thing real quick. There. It's a little better. All right, so uh, he asked me to put on here a holder for a half inch ferro rod. Uh, I don't know the exact length of it, probably five or six inches, but this will work for either. It's nice and tight right now, but he's gonna have to put some bungee through his ferro rod. He said he's got a hole in his rod as well as uh, some bungee. So you wanna loop that through and have it go over the end of it. And that will retain this once the rod is whittled down and too small for the holder to grip it tightly. Up here we have a holder for a flashlight. This is the Olight i3T EOS. It's a nice little uh, pen light style light. I really like this thing. It's got two different brightness settings. You can obviously see one is fairly low. The other is quite high. And uh, it's just a great little EDC size light. Olight's one of my favorite flashlight companies, but let me know what you guys think down below. Finally, over here, we have a holder for the Sunto Clipper Compass. This is my favorite compass to put onto a sheath because uh, it is very compact, it's accurate, it's reliable, it's inexpensive, it costs under $20 in almost all cases that I've had to buy one. And uh, it also features this little clipper jaw on the back side of it, which you can actually just use to slide under the plate here and guide it toward the hole, you'll feel the head of that drop down into the hole and then it sits flush on there. It's nice and secure. So this is a really great little setup. Um, the piggyback here is a breakaway and this is the first time I've done one in this particular configuration. So let's go through that as well. Uh, he asked me to make the MSK 2.5 sheath carry on what's called a foamy clip. He didn't want to go with the tech lock, so we're doing a foamy clip and uh, he wanted something that could carry vertical as well as canted or horizontal. So what I've done here is I've set this up on a pivot plate 
as well. Now this pivot plate's a little bit different from the one on the tech lock. My, uh, geez, my power strip's having a little bit of trouble dealing with my heat press lately. I apologize for the lighting. Um, basically I've just done a single point, single pivot point where this is a small and light setup. I don't think it really needs the, the rugged over kill that you see here on the tech lock pivot plate. Um, so this is how we're going to do it here. Um, now it also is compatible. If you ever need to remove the pivot plate, you can remove it and just mount the foamy directly to the sheath. But if you do that, you're limiting yourself to just having a horizontal carry. So I really like this setup. It's nice. It's compact. It's not as low profile as I would like it to be, but there's no other way to do this and still get the pivot. Um, to make it lower profile than it could have been, I actually put hardware recess on the blade directly rather than over the handle where I would normally do that. So it does keep the pivot roughly flush with where the handle is rather than coming up off of the handle. So that does uh, keep it down just a little bit. Uh, the retention on this is really nice. It's got ballistic one-handed draw, nice click in, no rattle, no play. And of course you can just grip it and rip it. That's always an option with any of the sheaths. I just personally prefer to use the thumb ramp because I've taken the time to engineer some nice springy retention and it's just a lot of fun to use that. So there you go. All right, and then, then the retention on the Operator 7, of course, very similar to the other sheath you saw ballistic draw although with this one having the extra weight on it you're not going to get it to fly the same way not that it matters because it'll be mounted to your body uh, or dangling from your body but the point of showing you a ballistic draw is simply to show that there is no drag on the blade um, that's really all we're talking about when we talk about a ballistic draw why that's a good thing is because it shows that the knife is not being inhibited anywhere inside there generally speaking uh, the amount of tape that I put over a blade will create enough space inside the cavity here that there's almost no contact between the two. And usually the only reason there is contact is because it's really hard to guide it in perfectly straight. It's more likely that you'll kind of have it tilted, you know, sideways and catch the edge and hear that uh, rub. But it's not, it's not pressure. It's not scratching. It's nothing like that. So um, that's how I've got this set up. Now. You might be wondering why there's a little piece of Kydex here kind of outlining the foamy clip. The reason I did that is because without that there, this adapter tilts the foamy clip at such a severe angle that it actually puts the knife, it puts the MSK kind of outward like this. Uh, not quite this extreme, but you get the idea. It tilts the handle really far out and makes it very uncomfortable. So what I've decided to do with this was to put it on a plate. The plate will push back and help to even that out some, but I've also had to mount the adapter on with the top of it angled inward slightly and that butt of it angled outward. And that really helps to mitigate the tilt of the MSK 2.5. So you're not gonna have them in total parallel, but that's actually slightly a good thing because it also allows you to uh, very cleanly grip either knife or both knives. The other thing I really like about this is you can also swivel your MSK while it's on the OP7 sheath. So if you want it to draw at a slightly different angle to make it a little more comfortable, you can very quickly adjust that. The only thing that you need to worry about really when it comes to having a piggyback setup is being able to cleanly access your larger knife um, because the handle of the smaller one oftentimes will inhibit you from getting a clean grip on that knife. Here you can see I'm making contact with my knuckles, but it's not uncomfortable. There is some flex to this, so it feels, you know, very soft. It's not intrusive in any way. And I can make a very clean draw with my Operator 7. It doesn't matter if I'm dangling or carrying on the chest. Either way is fine. Now, as far as this adapter goes um, for the breakaway, all it really is is, as you can see, molded out in the shape of the foamy clip. So this little tab goes into the end there and it kind of centers and locks it in place a little bit. Um, it doesn't have any way of really truly locking in place. So what I like to do is once you get it started, push it all the way in, use your thumb and make sure you get all the way up to this little S curve in the foamy clip itself. That is bottoming out. That's as deep as it's gonna go. 
and uh, it just makes it a little more comfortable when you do it like that. Um, the retention of the adapter on the MSK sheath is a little bit lighter than I'd like, but there's, like I said, there's just no way to really fully grip this. So you kind of have to use the thumb ramp, in my opinion, um, when you have this mounted. So I would recommend, you know, you could grip it and rip it, but you will have the sheath move on you just a little bit. So just use the thumb ramp and you'll have no issues there. Uh, however, it is perfectly sufficient to retain that. You can see it hasn't moved at all. It's not just going to fall out on you while you're uh, using it. So don't worry too much about that. But there we go. We have our two sheets. Let me know which one you like better. Let me know why. Do you like cowhide or gator best? I personally love both, but gator is always going to be my favorite. Um, let me know what you think of the carry setups. Do you like Baldrick or chest carry better? I love both, but again, Baldrick is actually always going to be my favorite. So I really like both of these sheaths. They both have some of my favorite options on them, and uh, I would love your opinions down below. So why don't you comment? Let us all know what you think of the Tops Operator 7. What do you think of the MSK 2.5? MSK, by the way, stands for Mini Scandi Knife. It's not the same as the, uh, the MSK from... Uh, uh, Oh, geez. Ultimate survival tips. Um, also a cool knife. I haven't actually had a chance to make a sheath for that thing yet, but if anybody has one and they want to send it my way for, uh, for a sheath, I'd love to do one for that. So let me know, guys. All right. That's all I've got for you. Comment down below. Like this video if you liked the content. Like my channel by subscribing. That was a really stupid way of saying that, but if you like the content on my channel, I'd love you to subscribe. Hit that bell to get notifications every time I upload new content. Also, feel free to comment down below and let me know what kind of new content you would like to see this year. And uh, I'm going to start trying to do a little bit more as far as videos go. And uh, maybe even start Patreon or something for some behind-the-scenes exclusive content. But we'll see about that. Alright guys, like, share, comment, subscribe. Stick around for the next one. God bless.